This is why people come for meetings, they cry, they fall on the floor, they do all kinds of things. But after two weeks, they go back because they were not taught that everything God does with a man rests on altars. Only altars sustain the stamina to bear the things that God gives to a man. Because you are the temple of God, because you house God, you don't need an altar. All that teaching on altars is fraud. Fraud. Daylight robbery. The altar is not a place inside the church. That's not an altar. Am I talking to somebody? You don't need to go to a place. You don't need to. There's no place on earth that is special. Hello, dear. I know by the grace of God, you are fine. If you are a Christian, we have to know that we have to worship God in truth and in spirit. A lot of people who call themselves Christians have idolized a lot of things in their lives. When you are worshiping God in truth and in spirit, whenever you find yourself, the Spirit of God is in you. What Jesus Christ came to do for us is to let us know the consciousness of Him, to also liberate us mentally so that we can distinguish between what is good and what is bad. If you believe in prayer, prayer is also good. Believe that everywhere or anywhere that you find yourself, if you pray, God will listen to you and accept it that He has already answered your prayers because it's in the Bible that He even knows what we want. He wants us to open our mouths so that we can give Him the glory and honor to Him. So, prayer is good. You don't have to just go and build something called altar. For you to stand on it for you to pray you can pray anywhere you can worship god anywhere that you find yourself real quick i'm going to show you a video from michael Urupo talking about altar let's listen to what he said but it's more important to pray prayers no matter what you know about prayer we come for nothing except you actually begin to pray so tonight we will engage prayer it's not enough just to commit to god if you commit to God and you don't sustain the disposition of prayer, after three days, you will discover that the euphoria of the atmosphere will depart from your soul, but there will be no stamina. This is why people come for meetings, they cry, they fall on the floor, they do all kinds of things, but after two weeks, they go back because they were not taught that everything God does with a man rests on altars. Only altars sustain the stamina to bear the things that God gives to a man. And you will look at it in scriptures. So one of the reasons we pray is because we want to preserve the heritage of God in our lives. If we don't pray, no matter what it is that God gives to us, it will float away by the winds. The winds and the circumstances of this world will come and it will carry them away like, a ch like chaff. I told you how most of us know that we are prophets, we are apostles, we are evangelists, we are commissioners, we are governors. The older you go, the more it will become to you like a story. The only way you can preserve it is by doing the business of altars. Hope you know when you were in primary school, in primary one, there were things you were screaming that you would be. Now that you have grown, circumstances have taught you that those things don't come on a platter. The only way you keep dreams and heritages alive is by engaging the business of altars. This is what the fathers of old knew. Every generation that was able to trap the heritage of God and to express it until it was committed to the next generation are a people of prayer. After God called Abraham and promised him everything for all generations, told him he was going to give him everything. Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 3. The Bible said the moment Abraham entered the promised land in verse 7, he said he built an altar to the Lord that appeared to him. The reason you receive encounters, you receive impartation, and you lose them is because you don't plant them on altars. Impartations and encounters will count for nothing unless they find their place on the altar that you will erect. If you don't have an altar, the impartations and the encounters you see will be wasted. I tell you, there will be divine resources wasted because a man does not understand responsibility. That's why Jesus said, don't cast precious things to swine. They will stamp on them and turn back at you. There's no point releasing virtue upon a man that cannot run it on the altars that he builds. Every time altars become absent in the life of a man, 
then spiritual and divine investment are wasted. So one of the reasons we pray is not just to ask God for bread and wine. Prayer is the infrastructure that the heritage of God we receive is established upon. You want to have establishment in this kingdom, then prayer must become your lifestyle. The second reason we pray is because the purpose of God on earth cannot be preserved except by prayer. It is replete in scriptures. You know, tonight is a night of prayer and impartation. This is why I'm just running through before we begin to pray. So that we know that that your prophetic call that you talk about will never manifest unless you begin to pray. The heritage of God in your life is preserved by prayers. I told you how I came to Apostle Arume and told him I'm a prophet. Because I see visions. I say I'm a seer. That, that's the word I use. I'm a seer. And then when he held my hand in the spirit, he said, Kai, you are light. You are light. You have not started. He said, go. When you begin, when God begins, I will tell you. Meanwhile, we were walking with suits and preaching everywhere like this. <laughs> you know how the devil was making a mess of us. You will go for a program, you will come back. After three weeks, somebody will be sick for three weeks. And then you will pray in tongues every night. The person will still die. Because you didn't have stature in the spirit. I went for impartation service. People were falling on the floor, crying everywhere. And when I finished, one hour later, they called me by 3, 3 p.m. in the afternoon. They told me my brother who is in the hospital have died. I came, the people say, oh boy, this guy carry power. People were crying and falling down. But the one that was in crisis, I had no power to salvage what the devil had prosecuted. Because we don't understand that even the authority of God upon our life cannot be wielded except prayer goes into the foundation of our everyday living. When prayer became my lifestyle, when God began to teach me the powers of priesthood, I now understood how many years I wasted. Because the same personality that was stealing people from the family, he came again for my father. And this time around, I didn't need to do vigils. I told him to go home. And then I went back into the chamber where my altar was erected. And when I lifted my voice to Zion, a being descended into my room, clothed with the sun. I knew judgment had come. That's when I understood that the reason men are powerful on earth is because they understand the intelligence of fraternity. When you see a man talk, he's talking by the agency of his spirit. When you see a man make declaration and it comes to pass, there are spirits that are at the command of his walls. He has known what it takes. Hope you know that Abraham's fraternity was all about his family until the Bible said he began the intelligence of altars. That was when Abraham began to have family in heaven. So at that point, kings came to take Lot. He didn't pray. The Bible said he took 318 trained servants from his house. He went after five kings and destroyed all of them. He saved Lot, came back with all his boys. And the king of Sodom said, take it. He said, no. I'm sufficient in myself. I know altars. By altars, I can enter into heaven. Anything I want happens. This is why these men, when they want to bless their children, they don't give them goats and elephants and cattle. They say, El Shaddai, bless you. Go. Inflation is no longer a factor. Because what they have secured has an eternal capacity. Because you say you are blessed. No matter what happens around you, it will turn out to be blessings. So they labor to stand in the spirit. Elijah will come out from the wilderness and stand in the palace and say, Before God, whom I stand. That is a man of altars. Nothing on earth moves them anymore. They have understood the intelligence of entering into their true reality. The man came again for my father. This time around, I was only to make decrees. And when I judged, three days later, my dad became strong. Three days later, the man went down. And his right feet began to decay. Foot began to decay. Three months later, he confessed and died. The amazing part of it, and the most, the most, the most troubling part of it was that the man altered his voice. And he said, he killed my brother. That means, if I knew the intelligence of prayer... I would have saved the life of my brother. So the reason my brother died is not because the devil is powerful. It's because I don't understand how to wield the scepter of authority that God gave me. The devil is not strong. You are weak. The destiny of a young man was wasted because the one that is the priest of the family was slumbering every night. 
and I vowed I vowed that everything God gives me I will preserve it to the fullest that was the kind of life men like Abraham lived Abraham littered better with altars everywhere you go in Bethel there were, there were altars until God himself will testify that I know Abraham that he will command his children in the path that they should go Dr. Abel Damina seriously I am an Ankala Tobiah. You are the house of God. You are the temple of God. You are the dwelling place of God. Somebody who believes in shall glory. Because you are the temple of God, because you house God, you don't need an altar. All that teaching on altars is fraud. Fraud. Daylight robbery. The altar is not a place inside the church. That's not an altar. Am I talking to somebody? You don't need to go to a place. You don't need to. There's no place on earth that is special. You don't even need to go to Israel. There's nothing in Israel. Instead of wasting your money to go to Israel, come to Uyo, where I live. It is better than Israel. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, I, I feel like I'm preaching. 2,000 years ago, Jesus told the woman by the well, you shall neither in Jerusalem nor in this mountain worship. The time cometh, and now is the time when true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, not in a location. <laughs> Glory to God. That's why I'm moving all over this place so that you know that that place is not altar. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm. What is an altar? <laughs> an altar is a, a place of animal sacrifice. Yes. Are you an animal? No. Why are you going to altar? If you are not an animal, why are you going to the altar? Animals are brought to the altar. I'm not an animal. I have an animal. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. And my animal has gone to the altar once and for all. I don't need to go to that altar anymore. Why? I am now the altar. If you are looking for an altar, this is the altar of God Almighty. Oh, I feel like I'm raging. God. Sit down, sit down, sit down, listen. The altar, the altar was inside the temple. The altar was inside the temple. The temple were three compartments. Holy of Holies, Holy Place, Outer Court. You, your body, Outer Court. Your soul, Holy of Holies. Your spirit, Holy Place. You are that temple. Inside you is the altar. So when you walk, the altar is walking. You don't need to go to an altar. You are the altar of God Almighty. I feel like I'm preaching here. If you're understanding, shout, I hear, I hear. Don't let any man of God use your money for breakfast in the name of an altar no 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 man of god has a bigger altar your altar is the biggest altar because your altar is the altar where christ himself resides in know who you are let the consciousness of christ be in you and let the faith that you've gotten through lord christ jesus to be in you and don't let any pastor Try to let you idolize certain things in your life. Thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you another time.